Ronaldo, can you just a little to the right? A little to the right. Other right. Other right. Other right. Actually, let's move up. Let's move up closer. Okay. I'm now just his apprentice. Yeah. John, are you good? I'm good. All right. All right. All right. I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. We're here this morning to discuss the latest update on the RICAS scores. As I'm sure everyone is aware, it was recently confirmed because of some top-notch reporting that the state of Rhode Island does in fact have the latest RICAS scores. Last Tuesday, Dan McKee looked into the camera, into the eyes of Rhode Islanders during the first debate in line. He not only lied directly to you in the press, but he lied to every parent and teacher in the state. He lied to every mom and dad who was anxiously awaiting the results, wondering if their child needs additional services, wondering if tutors need to be sought or IEPs need to be put into place. He lied to every teacher who was awaiting the RICAS scores to determine whether they need to adjust their lesson plans. Last Tuesday, Dan McKee said, the people who are doing the study have said that MCAS is in first place, that's Massachusetts, and then Rhode Island will follow. He continued by saying, my understanding is now we're in second in line to get that information. So when the information is ready, it will be provided. When pushed again, he firmly said, I do not have the scores. Let's pretend for a moment that the statement from the governor is true. That on Tuesday, he believed Rhode Island did not yet have the scores. Well, that in and of itself, is incredibly concerning. Because during last Thursday's debate, he proudly proclaimed, I meet with the Education Commissioner twice a week. You meet twice a week with the Education Commissioner and you don't even know that the RICAS scores have been delivered. Do you care so little about our children's performance that you don't even bother to ask the Commissioner of Education about RICAS scores during your twice a week meeting? Based on what the Commissioner said this morning, a month passed between the state receiving the scores and the first debate. So Governor, you never asked once during that period. If that is in fact the truth, then it is almost as shameful as lying. If that is in fact the truth, Governor, then it would be a travesty to entrust you with our children's future for the next four years. But let's continue. On Friday night, Dan McKee's office released a statement after he was caught lying that said, the governor has been very clear. He does not yet personally have and has not personally seen the RICAS scores in any form. If you knew we had them on Tuesday, then why did you say we're next in line to receive them after Massachusetts? You were either woefully uninformed about what is going on in the state or you are lying. Only one of those two things can be true, but we'll move on. At 10 p.m. on Friday, Ride finally released a statement. 10 p.m. on a Friday. If that doesn't scream or try to bury the story, then I don't know what else does. 10 p.m. on a Friday, that's disrespectful to all of you in the press. We're just trying to do your jobs. And it's disrespectful to the people of Rhode Island. But let's dig into Ride's statement. After a convoluted word salad mentioning data warehouses and data portals, the release said, until this thorough process is complete, these draft materials are confidential and have not been shared, including with the governor. I'm sorry, but is Ride saying that mid-level bureaucrats in a data warehouse can see the data, but the governor of Rhode Island cannot? If there is one person in Rhode Island who should be able to see confidential data being held by the state, guess what? Something tells me that should be the governor. For Ride to claim that the data is so top secret that the governor himself cannot see it, it's ridiculous. Further this morning, the Education Commissioner pointed to short staffing for being unable to process the scores in a timely manner. The governor meets with her twice a week. Where was the leadership? Leaders intervene and they solve problems. Dan McKee points fingers and belittles serious problems. As governor, if my Education Commissioner is saying that they need more help to get the scores out on time, I will move heaven and earth to ensure that it got done. I would assume that Governor Baker in Massachusetts gets a briefing before the results are made public, and he has no problem releasing the scores. So to put it lightly, something is off here. Either one, Dan McKee flatly, flat out lied to Rhode Island on Tuesday. Two, 
Ride lied to cover up for the governor on Friday, which is possible considering that Ride ran its statement by McKee's team before sending it out? Or three, Dan McKee thought he was being truthful when he said that the state didn't have the data, which would tell you that he cares so little about our children's performance that he never even bothered to ask about it during his twice a week meeting with the Education Commissioner. Rhode Island deserves better. Our parents deserve better. And most importantly, our students deserve better. I will do better, that's my promise. My administration is committed to releasing the ride pass scores by September 30th every year. Releasing this data early is critical. As Channel 12 noted in its report, scores are of high interest to the wider community, including parents, teachers, policymakers, who often use the scores to make decisions. If our current vendor cannot get that done, and I'm not sure what the current contract agrees to, then we will find a vendor that can. My administration will always strive for transparency. I will own the results, I will not make excuses. Because parents, teachers, and students must come before politics. I will always dive into the details and be a hands-on leader when it comes to education. Because our future generation is too important to not do the hard work. With that, I'll take questions. Ms. Kalis, is there a... Delay is not political. I'm sorry, I don't know how... The governor says that this delay is not political. Okay. It's incompetence then. It doesn't matter what the reason is, the results should have been released. And if you follow the line of uh, logic that's being used, you see a governor that is either is not curious about the scores, is ill-informed, even though he meets with the commissioner twice a week, and then also does not provide the help necessary. So if he says it's not political, then the other line of facts makes it so he's so incompetent, he is not fit to leave. But you said Gina Raimundo did the same thing. Gina Raimundo didn't release it. Gina Raimundo didn't release it on time too. In 2018, yes, they were not like released. It, it was the election year, but what I have said is that is the first year, so I'll give her a buy. This is not the first year. And Fonte Green, and Fonte Green said on the radio this morning that the department only has one data specialist. Should the state be stepping in to do more to help Ride get the scores out faster? Absolutely. If she needed support, I'm sure that would have come up during the twice a week meeting uh, that about the fact that she was short staffed. I'm certain it would have come up. And if it did come up and the governor did nothing to help, that is also someone who is not fit to leave. We'll go pat them down. Do you think there's some type of plausible deniability attempt here? If don't ask, don't tell. If I simply don't bring it up, then I don't know and then I can deny. It doesn't matter what the reason is. The reality is that student scores are being delayed through incompetence or for political purposes. Does it really matter? If it's for political purposes, it's terrible. But if it's incompetence, that's equally as terrible. It, it really, the, the, the two alternatives are both equally as bad. The governor turned the tables today and said, we really need to release your tax cards. Go Stephen and I, and I've said I am happy to release my taxes when he releases the RICAS scores and the That's subpoenas. Now? I listen. What, whatever we could do to get those scores, fine. And he knows that I. I mean, they weren't filed till till today. That's the deadline. Okay. So what I will say is, let's release the RICAS scores. Now he is informed of the fact that we have the data. So now that he knows that the data is there, he can do what he needs to do to get them done. I'm not going to release your taxes unless right, he releases somebody else this, these Ashley, scores. Actually, when the governor stood on stage and said, we don't have the test scores. Channel 12 now reporting is one of its aides helped craft the statement of the Rhode Island Department of Education. So why should we take this anything other than he was lying on the Channel 12 debate stage? It's either he's lying or he's so incompetent that he cannot be governor of the state. If you look at the sequence and the timeline that he's proposing now as an explanation, it is deeply disturbing. He did not provide the support to ride in order to get these scores out. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Or he has a twice a week meeting and doesn't even ask if the if the data has been delivered. You can bet that when I'm governor, I'm asking, do we get it yet? Do we get it yet? Especially in a twice a week meeting. You have to have somebody who actually cares about education. He can profess to care, but his actions show something very different. And if he's lying, we deserve better. But the governor, you have your staff helping the Rhode Island Department of Education. They have communication with PR people. Why are they helping Ryan craft the statement to the press? It, it sounds like they're instructing them how to mislead the public. The deadline in my administration will be September 30th, and we will do everything we need to do to support um, Ryan in getting it out for that deadline. Deadlines are deadlines. Leadership requires deadlines to be set and then met. 
Yes, yeah, so there will be support. You've also said, though, you don't particularly like the Rycast test and the way the you know, results come out. So how do you square away kind of making this a campaign we, issue versus your concerns right, around well, testing? So let's talk about education and testing. So we still need testing, high standards, and transparency. The fact that I want us to do better with testing overall as a country too, it is not, those are two separate things. We haven't had innovation and testing in a long time, and so we should strive towards that. That doesn't mean that I want to get rid of uh, high standards, accountability, and transparency, but you should have a governor that's interested in education, interested in, in making sure that testing in general is better for students, but that doesn't mean that you abandon testing, you just still try to make progress. So do you want to keep the RICAS and in, in just make it better, or do you want to go to a new test? So we, we need to start with what we have, but we should have someone that, that seeks to do better with testing. Teachers, parents, no one is happy with how we do standardized testing, and progress-based testing allows us to intervene um, during different times in the year. That doesn't mean that we get rid of high standards. So you can have both of those things at the same time, but we do need there to be um, some standards, some transparency, and what we're seeing here is moving away from that. Did and with progress-based testing, I would expect that those tests are delivered on time too. To the governor's point this morning, when he says that uh, white pass scores are becoming political, are you making it political by making you know it conditional that you'll release your taxes if the right cast scores are released? I will do whatever I can to make sure that parents and teachers get the data that they need. I think that it is losing sight of what it means to not have those scores delivered. We're talking about uh, parents and teachers who cannot put an IEP together. It, we deserve better. And why didn't he just say on the debate stage, why didn't he mention the delay? Why wasn't he just honest about what was happening? And then now, once he gets caught, now there's a whole new explanation. We deserve a leader that is honest, transparent, and is able to deliver bad news. And when you when you lack credibility in your responses, and now all of a sudden you're, you're qualifying things with saying, oh, we don't have the scores. Oh, I don't personally have the scores. The people of Rhode Island don't know better. It, it is, we deserve better than someone who, who will look into a camera and not be honest and then find a way to parse words so that he was sort of honest is what he's saying. That's not good enough. So to be clear, will you release your taxes? Will I release my taxes? Yes. But what I'd really like is the right cast scores. And if I if, if saying, hey, I'll release my taxes, because both people, like he, he brought that up as sort of a political thing, right? That was release your taxes. And what I'm saying is, okay, release the right cast scores. Release the subpoenas. If we're talking about transparency and accountability in government, it needs to be complete. And I am happy to run a campaign where I am completely transparent and he's completely transparent. I just ask that when he makes a claim or a um, he desires some sort of transparency and he's he's demanding that of me while the same week he's denying RICAS re, uh, results to parents and teachers, I think that it is fair for me to say, okay, I'll do what I need to do, you do what you need to do. And I think that that I think it would be reasonable for him to agree to it, but now it's a bunch of excuses. So Actually, when, will you, when will you release it? Did he make it political by delaying the release till after the election? It sounds like he's the one that made it political. It's very easy for him to fix it. He can just get additional staffing on board and release the scores. But if he needs my help, I'm happy he to help him. I bailed him out before it. I can bail him out again. <laughs> We're going to go two more. We'll do but, Tali, then Pat. But so when will you release your taxes? You say you will. When? I think they're, they're being filed today, so it could probably be tomorrow. I really was hoping that we would get the RICAST scores, but the reality is that it seems like when you're choosing between two different leaders, there's only one that's going to be transparent, and that's going to be me. And you can judge based on what you're seeing with Dan McKee, which is he wasn't honest about what um, the sequence of facts is that he's claiming now in terms of the RICAST scores. Do you pay taxes in Rhode Island? You'll, I guess you'll see. Do you think we'll get the RICAST scores if well, I no, wait? No, we're asking, do you pay taxes in Rhode Island? That's a I have paid question. taxes, yes, you pay? in okay. Rhode Island, yes. Um, question. Based on House testimony earlier this year, it's clear that the special ed system in Rhode Island is in, it basically in meltdown. Talk to me as a mom, as a parent, and also as a candidate about the impact that not getting your RICAS scores will have on IEPs, parent-teacher conferences that could be well pushed out until after the Christmas holiday based on this, this well, this holdup. Well, I've learned as a politician when I speak as a person, sometimes it's held against me, but I'll talk as a mom. I'm 
not going to say which kid because that violates my child's privacy, but I've had a kid that relied on those results for a 504 and an IEP. And the reality is the process from moving from results to a plan <coughs> takes a while, and when you delay it, you're actually delaying uh, results for parents. And it's really hard as a parent to wait and to, to wait anyway, like you're waiting because that score ends up being the foundation for other things that you're gonna do for your child. And I'm speaking as a mom right now. Now as, um, I mean, I, I think that's the easiest way to speak because the reality is to, to take away what he is doing from the reality on the ground for what he's doing to parents and to teachers who wanna help their kids is not doing a service to Rhode Island. Actually, uh, Daniel Ark of WPRO has three hours a day, and he's admitted he's doing volunteer work or volunteer with the P campaign. He acts as a radio surrogate. Have you considered approaching the station of having a surrogate of yours given three hours a day? Due um, to the fact that he's admitted, he's basically working for the P campaign. I, I don't know what to say to that. It's, dis it's disappointing. I believe the Fourth Estate is critical to democracy. And I think that having uh, a respect for the press is important, and I, I refuse to engage in anything that would anything that would. But you wouldn't remove... approach them about a surrogate of yours given equal time, well, since he's admitted he's volunteering as a campaign. Just like sure. I think that it's a conflict of interest. I think that it makes people question whether he can be fair. I'm sure we could approach them. I think that the answer will be no, <laughs> but I think that. It is important for democracy, for the press to be involved, and for there to not be any appearance of a conflict, so that people can trust the information that they receive. I believe that the appearance of impropriety is, is inappropriate, no matter where it is, whether it's in government or somewhere else. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.